Hey, welcome to another radio video and uh, I was thinking that we could uh, have a few videos actually explaining the different amateur radio bands on the uh, shortwave frequency spectrum. So I'll uh, go from 160 meters all the way up to 10 meters and uh, talk about their different uh, specifications of the bands, uh, when they are the best and uh, what you can expect to hear or not and um, a little bit on each band of what you should look for and different types of frequencies so this is a 160 meter amateur band it starts from 1.8 and goes up to 1.999 uh, megahertz and uh, basically this is a very local band in general so um, first of all if you look at the frequency range is just above the uh, medium wave band or the AM band that we call in North America if you uh, check that the AM band stops at 1710 kilohertz and you see that the amateur radio band starts at uh, 18 uh, 1.8 uh, megahertz so it's uh, you know 1800 kilohertz it gives you an idea that the characteristics of this band are pretty much like medium wave uh, that's pretty much local um, what you can expect to hear well in the daytime unless you have some really close ham radio operators having a contact very close contact um, I would say that probably during the daytime this band is dead uh, at night time though it opens up and what you can hear is surprising um, I've heard Europeans there but usually you'll hear more local hundred or so kilometers so the band is divided divided into several spectrums uh, it's first of all not available the full 1.8 to 2 megahertz is not available everywhere for the full uh, length of the band some uh, regions in the world actually go up to uh, 1.840 so uh, that is a limited band here in North America we're allowed to have from 1.8 up to 2 megahertz so the first bottom part of the band will be typically Morse code signals like this one for example So expect to have Morse code at the beginning of the band. It's also a band that might not be super popular in most areas. One of the reasons why this band might not have too many signals is first of all the fact that it's very low in frequency and that it is very noisy. It's one of those, uh, you know, in, on shortwave, there's usually one little rule is that the lower in frequency you are, the noisier you get, and especially with today's electronics. So as 160 meter band requires um, that you live most of the time in a quiet environment. And not just that, it also requires very big antennas because of its slow frequency. So not all amateur radio operators will want to operate there. Uh, then you'll have a mix of digital signals in the lower part of the band also that you can maybe hear, but um, I don't hear much. I've heard radio teletype a few times. And uh, we can say that starting about 1835 to 1840, you can actually put your radio in lower sideband lower sideband being D mode used here Around 
1880 to uh, 1890 some amateur radio in the AM mode but uh, they're a little hard to hear in the noise level especially here I have a tremendous noise if I take out the attenuator you can see that my noise level is way up there almost in the uh, red portion of my meter so it's extremely hard to hear anything for me on this band um, even though I did hear a few signals so you can see that if you have a um, lower noise you probably hear more but some AMers here 1880 1885 and then you've got the rest of the band some uh, lower side band overall pretty quiet as you've seen here I've heard uh, what two or three signals max but it's worth it to uh, tune around you know even though the band's quiet um, I would suggest that you tune around and still take a peek of what you can hear uh, you never know and actually that's the case for all of shortwave always tune the bands where even if you know that well when you're on that band you never heard anything before you you know it's by going to these bands that you never hear anything regularly that you eventually find something so uh, mostly a nighttime band as we said 160 meter band and uh, one of those little nice very local band so you can, probably can hear some amateur radio operators that are uh, up to maybe a hundred miles from your location and uh, at night time and um, if you're in a quiet environment sometimes uh, who knows I've heard uh, Europe once or twice maybe on this band you never know what you can hear it's uh, quite amazing and um, if you're a city dweller like I am you'll probably have a lot of difficulty uh, receiving any signals here uh, with the high noise so that's a 160 meter amateur radio band it's the uh, lowest band in the shortwave spectrum uh, it's a little out of the shortwave spectrum because if we uh, usually talk about the amateur radio bands uh, or shortwave shortwave starts technically at 3 megahertz but uh, if we kind of you know spread it out to 1.8 for the amateur radio band uh, we, this is more of a medium wave frequency range for amateur radio so I uh, hope you'll enjoy this little series on the different amateur radio bands and their uh, characteristics of propagation and uh, hey why not take time to tune around even if you never heard anything like I said so uh, 73's